The recent surge in paranormal shows saturating the airwaves has everyone talking. Ghosts, spooks, and specters are common discussions around the water cooler and aired almost every night of the week. But the hot supernatural topic for the last couple of years has been EVPs. By definition, EVPs are audio recordings of a sound anomaly, usually a voice. Not heard at the time of the recording, but found later during playback. Natural explanations range from static and misidentified background noise to psychological concepts such as apophenia, which is very similar to matrixing and when you see or hear something meaningful in something completely insignificant. Like seeing faces in the clouds, images in the smoke, skulls in the flames, or even hearing voices in the vacuum cleaner. We captured this EVP in an empty old jail cell where a prisoner had hung himself, and compared to the otherwise silent room, it didn't sound like static or background noise to us. So that's obviously speech and the words are pretty clear, but where did it come from and how was it made? We hit the books for a little history and research on the subject. EVP is an acronym for Electronic Voice Phenomenon, and we were surprised to find that the first person reported to hear an EVP was none other than Nikola Tesla. At the time, he was experimenting with frequency oscillation and radio waves. The sounds I am listening to every night at first appear to be human voices conversing back and forth in a language I cannot understand. I find it difficult to imagine that I am actually hearing real voices from people not of this planet. There must be a more simple explanation that has so far eluded me. Considering Tesla spoke at least six languages fluently, he was completely baffled. He spent the rest of his life trying to figure out where the voices were coming from with no real success or satisfactory explanation, thus giving birth to the EVP phenomenon. Radio and sound wave technology were new to the age, and Tesla wasn't the only scientist of his day to explore the voices being heard. Thomas Edison also reportedly spent until his death in 1931 working on the Spirit Phone, which was supposedly a machine that would record and interact with these voices. But no blueprints or prototypes were ever found, and many consider the project to be a hoax. In 1952, two Catholic priests named Father Ernetti and Father Gamelli were recording some Gregorian chants together when they also recorded Gamelli's dead father's voice speaking directly to his son. Of course I shall help you. I'm always with you. But Zucchini, it is clear. Don't you know it is I? The two rattled priests took the recording to Pope Pius XII, who told them not to worry about it. You really need not worry about this. The existence of this voice is strictly a scientific fact and has nothing whatsoever to do with spiritism. The recorder is totally objective. It receives and records sound waves from wherever they come. This experiment may perhaps become the cornerstone for a building for scientific studies which will strengthen the people's faith in a hereafter. In 1959, a Swedish film producer named Friedrich Jurgensen was recording songbirds when the voice of his mother came through loud and clear and called him by his childhood pet name. Friedrich, you are being watched. Friedel, my little Friedel, can you hear me? He spent the rest of his life recording and collecting hundreds of electronic voice phenomenon, as well as influencing the work of the very skeptical Latvian doctor, Konstantin Radaev, who later went on to advocate, document, and capture over 72,000 alleged spirit voices. During the 1970s and 80s, EVP work continued ambitiously with George Meek and Bill O'Neill out of a small laboratory in Philadelphia where they invented what they called the Spiricom. This machine supposedly allowed two-way communication with the deceased, specifically a doctor and scientist by the name of George Jeffries Mueller. During their experiments, the spirit Dr. Mueller not only provided enough facts about his life to confirm his identity, which included his social security number, but he also helped to further develop the Spiricom technology. Imagine that, a ghost speaking clearly enough to help with the development of a machine to speak to the dead. Here are some sound clips from the original Spiricom recordings. Yes, 
sir. All right, Doc. I'm sorry. I was lighting a cigarette. Dr. Mueller may have sounded like a robot and maybe more like Peter Frampton's guitar, but he was clearly taking part in a two-way conversation from beyond the grave through a machine simple by today's technology standards, and the schematics are widely available on the Internet to try it yourself. EVP work continues around the world, still with no clear explanation as to where the voices are coming from or how they're being made. EVPs are not always voices either. They can be music, machinery, taps, bangs, animals, whistles, and much more, like this experience we had in Butler, Missouri. I'm hearing music. You still hear it? I'm hearing music. It's also important to recognize, despite the fact they sound really creepy, they aren't always meant to scare you. Since ghosts don't have vocal cords, they utilize what they can to make noise, and it often comes out sounding sinister or frightening. Technically, we know that both digital and analog recordings are created through magnetic and electromagnetic impulses impressed on a tape or digitized into an audio format. On our investigations, we've often experienced an electromagnetic flux at the time an EVP is recorded. Not always, but often, and this leaves us to speculate that it may be a manipulation of frequency, magnetic, and or electromagnetic energy. As paranormal investigators, we've captured an amazing number of EVPs in undeniable quality and context, which keeps us searching and researching. That's the real deal. You can hear the tone of voice, the words are very clear, and it's completely in context, making it a Class A EVP. Typically, EVP researchers classify the phenomenon into three groups, Class A, Class B, and Class C. A Class A EVP can be heard without headphones, and people generally agree on its content. Class B may require headphones to distinguish, and not everyone will agree on the content. Although you can hear the singing without headphones, we lean more toward this being a Class B because not everyone agrees on the content. Everybody who listens to it hears the man singing, but some people will hear a Native American chanting while others swear it's Paul McCartney singing, Hey Jude. Class C requires headphones. It often needs amplification or filtering and will seldom be understood by everyone. While we didn't amplify or apply any filters to this clip, you certainly get the idea. You can tell there's something there, but it's hard to hear and completely indiscernible. Looking at the science of sound waves and frequency, it's generally accepted that the human voice ranges from 20 Hz to about 14,000 Hz. The average speaking range falls between 300 and 400 Hz, and it's debated the human voice can't go below 80 Hz. Researchers believe that most EVPs come in between 0 and 300 hertz, but since the human voice has such a wide range in life, it may also have a wide range in death, and these are only speculations. The more we learn about EVPs, the more questions we have. The bottom line is that no one seems to know how they're being made or by whom, even though there are some very workable theories out there. If you've ever captured the voice of your dearly departed, you've probably drawn your own conclusion as to who made the recording. But the question of how they are being made is still widely debated. Here's to electronic voice phenomenon, one of life's many fascinating working mysteries. Ghosts are not pets.